Hi, I'm Dave Taddeo, and this is Coders Tech. It's Wednesday, October 29th, 2014, and this is episode nine. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, coding design, and in particular, AR coding designs or anti reflection coding designs. And one of the things I want to talk about is uh, optical interference. Over the years, I've worked with uh, lots of people, and one of the things that I've heard many, many times from lots of different people um, doing different uh, jobs and, uh, and taking on different roles and functions in, within a company or within a coding uh, department is that an AR coding design, the last layer of an AR coding design, has to be uh, made up of a low index material. And so I kind of want to dispel that myth because I don't think that's true. And I'll show a couple of examples. Um, to get started, one of the things I want to talk about is inter interference. Uh, I'm going to share my screen for a moment. And if we look at Wikipedia, we'll be able to see interference. They talk about it here. Um, and in this particular case, it's wikipedia.org, and I just typed in interference. And it talks about the mechanism of interference and what that means. It has some graphics and so on and so forth, constructive and destructive interference. And it talks about the phase difference or the phase shift of, of waves or propagating waves. <clears throat> and um, what you can see here is we have uh, the constructive interference occurs when the phase difference between the waves is a multiple of 2 pi, whereas destructive interference occurs when the difference is an odd multiple of pi, so pi or 3 pi or 5 pi or so on. Okay, so go through this. Uh, you can find the um, calculations and so on, some good examples. Um, here we talk about dark fringes and bright fringes. Uh, probably uh, you may have um, learned about the slit experiment and so on and so forth in school. And this is some of the things that are going on here. Um, so when we talk about optical interference coatings, this is really what we're talking about. And so when we discuss anti-reflection coatings, we're talking about um, interference. And so one of the things that I hear quite a bit is the if we have our substrate, Here, it could be anything, BK7, quartz, uh, germanium, depending on the wavelength range you're looking at. Um, it has and <clears throat> is greater than one. Uh, over here, we have air, typically. Could be air or space or whatever the case may be if we're talking about satellite systems and stuff like that, where N is approximately equal to one. Okay, even if we have uh, a system that's operating, an optical system that's operating in water and is approximately equal to 1.33, okay? So these are the mediums that we'll be operating in, our substrates, uh, even quartz is going to be N equals 1.46 uh, at 550 or so, 550 nanometers. Um, possibly magnesium fluoride if we're doing some uh, laser optics uh, down in the UV range where um, magnesium fluoride and is going to equal uh, you know 1.4 something uh, down in the UV range and so on and so forth. So we have this here. We've got uh, n equals one and n equals greater than one. Okay, so now when our wave comes in, we have a phase shift at this interface here, the air to substrate interface, and that's going to give us our reflection, okay? Um, one thing to keep in mind is a, a little uh, rhyme that I heard uh, during some, uh, during a conference once, low to high phase shift, pi. 
or high to low, phase shift, no. Okay? So always keep that in mind. I hope you can see that. I know there's reflection there, but low to high, phase shift, pi. High to low, phase shift, no. Okay? So in this case, we're going from low to high. And so we're going to have a phase shift of pi at this interface, okay? Low to high, phase shift pi. Now, if we want to, I'm going to erase this for a second, start fresh. If we want to take a look at our substrate over here, could be anything, m is greater than one, or typically, let's say, bk7 or, or quartz or something, n is going to be greater than 1.4. Whatever we put on our substrate, it could be magnesium fluoride, it could be titanium oxide, it could be germanium even, even if we put germanium where n equals four, somewhere around 10 microns. As our wave comes in, we're still going from low to high, low to high. We're still gonna have the same phase shift, okay? Regardless of what material we have here, what our substrate is, what the coating material is, we have the same phase shift, okay? So it doesn't really matter what the index of this material is, the outer layer is. We could have several layers over here. It doesn't matter what the index is over here we're going to have the same phase shift, low to high, okay? Even if we're in water uh, with a refractive index of 1.33, and if we have magnesium fluoride here, where N equals 1.38, water N equals 1.33, we're still going to have low to high, okay? So it doesn't really matter, this, this idea that a, an anti-reflection coating has to have the outer or the boundary layer uh, being um, low index, uh, doesn't matter. And in this case, we're gonna have several layers. And as we've just seen, no matter what this outer layer is, we're gonna have the same phase shift. And this could be, uh, in an example I'm going to show in a minute, zinc sulfide, N equals 2.2 or so uh, in the mid to far infrared range. So let's call this 7 microns. Um, this phase shift is going to be the same. Let's say that our substrate is uh, calcium fluoride, okay, where the index is going to be somewhere around 1.35 or 1.3 something. Um, the refractive index of our boundary layer and our substrate, if this was, if this layer was the only layer, if it was right here, we would have more reflection, obviously. We wouldn't have the uh, decrease in reflection. But what we put here, these materials here, we are now setting up an optical interference matrix, okay? We could have germanium, N equals four. We could have uh, thorium fluoride. Mm. Thorium fluoride, N equals 1.4 or so. And so we can set up an interference matrix having our phase shift. We have low to high, low to high, high to low. We can go uh, low to high again. Let's call this zinc sulfide. Uh, let's call this thorium fluoride again. You know, I'm just making this up as I go along. So our interference matrix, the phase shift at each of these uh, interfaces is going to be set up based on our coding design. So the optical performance of light coming through or light being reflected outside of this entire uh, setup here, this entire thin film uh, stack here, is based on all of these phase shifts 
and obviously the index and the thickness of these films. But what this does is, is it gives us this outside layer here. We can see that the phase shift is always going to be from low to high. So we can see that uh, we can increase our choice of materials for the outside layer. Uh, a lot of the um, engineers or designers that I've spoken to over the years, and the reason I'm talking about this, talking about having um, uh, the last layer being a low refractive index, something like 1.38 or 1.46 or something like that, or 1.4, whatever the case may be, that doesn't matter because what our last layer is could be anything because we're going to set up this interference matrix. So we don't really have to choose magnesium fluoride or thorium fluoride or uh, silicon dioxide or something like that, a so-called low refractive index um, for our last layer because we're going to have the rest of our design is going to set up our optical interference matrix to have our optical system do what we want it to do and, and move light the way we want it to move it. Okay. So now we can choose uh, something like zinc sulfide as our last layer with the refractive index of 2.2 and set up, use other materials and set up our optical interference matrix. We could probably even use uh, germanium with the refractive index of four, okay? Um, because our phase shift is always going to be the same at this outer boundary, this outer layer, okay? So let's take a uh, look at a quick example. I'm going to share my screen again, and we'll look at Filmstar. And I've got just a couple of, not this design, a couple of designs here. Here's a CO2 laser design. And what we can see is if I calculate this, we can see at 10.6 microns, down at the bottom here, right down in this, in this box here, we can see we've got a uh, reflection of 0.21%. The design is, excuse me, 10.37 low and uh, 2.59 medium. Our monitor wavelength is 700 nanometers. And the materials that we're using, our substrate is zinc sulf or, or, sorry, zinc selenide. Our medium is zinc selenide. And our low is thorium fluoride. So we can see that our substrate being zinc selenide, our first layer that we deposit is so-called low, which is uh, 10.3 10, 10 quarter waves at 700. And our outer layer is 2.59 quarter waves at 700 of medium, or um, pretty much the same refractive index of our substrate itself. So here we've got a so-called higher refractive index as our outer layer and then the lower refractive index uh, adjacent to our substrate itself. And zinc selenide, uh, without any coating on it, has fairly high re uh, reflection. So we've done a good job here bringing the reflection down to 0.21% at our lasing wavelength of our CO2 laser. Okay, So this, you can see, really um, is a good example of uh, why we don't need a so-called low refractive index as our outer or boundary layer to our medium. Another quick example is a three to five micron AR. And we can see that across from 3.4 to 5.2 microns, we have less than 1%. We're probably averaging about 0.5%, <coughs> excuse me. We'll take a look at our film indices. This is on germanium. Our medium is zinc sulfide. Our high refractive index layer is germanium. 
and our low refractive index layer is thorium fluoride. Now, thorium fluoride, I know most people don't use it anymore. You can get uh, um, mixtures of materials, uh, especially if you're working out towards the 10.6 or, or beyond 9 micron range where you don't want to have any absorption. You need to have thorium fluoride. But now we have uh, mixtures of materials from uh, companies like EMD, Millipore, their Patinol uh, series of materials, you can find replacements for thorium fluoride when you're not dealing with high energies. Uh, you, you need to have, uh, um, you don't mind a little bit of absorption. Okay, so substrate is germanium, medium zinc sulfide, high uh, germanium, and low uh, thorium fluoride. This is the result, this is our optical performance, and our design is our first layer being 134 nanometers of zinc sulfide, 95 nanometers of germanium, 64 nanometers of zinc sulfide, 400 nanometers of thorium, and 110 nanometers of zinc sulfide again. And so this, again, this is a very good example of showing that you don't have to have this low refractive index um, material on the outside layer, on the boundary layer. You can use zinc sulfide, and then set up this using three materials with three different refractive indices, you can set up an optical interference matrix in order to attain the anti-reflection coating that you're trying to get, or trying to get the, uh, the optical performance that you're trying to get. So again, um, this really shows that you don't have to have that. And of course, you could use zinc selenide or something on the outside layer. And what this does, like I said uh, earlier, is it really opens up the, um, the possibilities or the, the availability of all kinds of different materials to be your outside layer. Um, you don't always have to go with a fluoride or, or uh, silicon dioxide or something like that. You can choose materials for different properties. You need something harder, for example. You need something that's going to be deposited uh, under different uh, um, circumstances or different temperatures or different uh, vacuum pressures or whatever the case may be. You can really broaden your uh, material choices uh, when you're not stuck with having to have a so-called low refractive index material as your outer layer in an anti-reflection coating. And this works across the board. You can uh, set up different examples, try yourself, um, you know, right from UV through the visible, near IR, mid wave, and uh, long wave IR. So try it out, um, check out the examples that I showed here, and uh, broaden your possibilities um, when you're doing your coating designs. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.